Now, if there's an elephant in the room, we get rid of it right away. There's some scary stuff out there in the nighttime. So, of course, I'm going to start with the animal that is probably responsible for the most bloodshed here in Olympic National Park. Definitely the most dangerous animal worldwide. I'm talking, of course, mosquitoes. Yeah. Oh, no! The mosquito. Oh, my gosh. Heart's palpitating and pumping. Now, the mosquito is crepuscular or nocturnal, depending on the species. You guys right now are beating away at them, right? That's because they're coming out. Here it is, dusk. Congratulations, smack. As a uh, park ranger, I'm supposed to love any living thing, right? That's practically <laughs> in the job description. Even I have a hard time appreciating the mosquito. They're crepuscular. They come out at dusk and dawn. But more importantly, the females are hematophagous. They eat blood. They need one blood meal to gestate their eggs. Oh boy, that sounds like fun. And so mosquitoes, female mosquitoes, will bite you, take away some of your blood, and of course leave you with a stinging well. Not only that, they come into your tent at dusk, they get trapped inside, and they spend the whole night going, <laughs> <laughs> until you're about ready to go crazy. <laughs> yeah. So... I am not a tremendous fan of mosquitoes, which is why I feel pretty lucky that we have a healthy population of the following animals in the park. Hooray! Now, sometimes this picture is deceiving. People think of bats in the Olympic, and for whatever reason, they think of, like, flying foxes, six-foot wingspan, descending from the night. In fact, this is a picture of Yuma myotis, a common bat here in the park. Here's a Yuma myotis. Oh. So go ahead. Probably some of you have at least heard some rumors about bad things about bats. Whether you believe them or not, can anybody give me an example of something bad about bats? Anybody who's not eight or less? Any adults feeling brave? Rabies. You, they've got rabies. That's ab Okay, let's go over that. And another one, what were you going to say? Um, they suck your blood. Anything else? Yeah? There might be vampire bats, Dracula. Anything else? Anything else? Anybody ever heard that they fly into your hair? That's a big one. For some, like, ladies with beehive hairdos seem especially to know that one. They get in your hair. So, a few things about bats. One, rabies. So, bats are, in fact, responsible for transmitting more rabies than almost any other animal. The main reason for that is if you got home at evening and there was a big rat lying dead on your floor, Chances are you would grab the longest handled broom that you could and a big dustpan and you would sweep it up and you would throw it away. But if people come home and they see a little bat laying on their floor, they're so cute that their immediate reaction is, oh, I'm going to help it. They pick it up and they sink those tiny little fangs into your hand because just like any wild animal, they don't like being handled. And they can, in fact, give you rabies. So it's more that they're handled by people than that they have a higher incidence of rabies. Flying into your hair, interestingly enough, that one has an element of truth as well. Bats will start to circle over your head because, as a warm-blooded, carbon dioxide-exhaling mammal, you're attracting a healthy crop of what every night? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, yes, indeed. So they'll come in to eat the mosquitoes that are gathering over your head. Rarely will they fly into your hair, however. Um, they suck blood or they're vampires. There are vampire bats. They live in Central America. <laughs> so don't worry about them up here. Unless you brought one up from Central America, did you? Okay, that was probably a smart move. They don't make good pets. They suck blood. <laughs> so, anybody take a wild guess? How many? I'll show you another bat while I'm thinking of it here. Oh, don't do that. Bats catch insects by using a trick called echolocation, which you guys, I'm sure, all know. And uh, Townsend's big eared bat gives you a pretty good picture of how that works. They have a sonar array built into the top of their head. They emit high-pitched squeaks that we can't hear usually. Beep, 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 until, will you be a moth? Just sit right there, moth. Until they start to close in on the moth. And they catch them that way. Pretty cool. Anybody got a guess? How many mosquito-sized insects can a bat eat in an evening? Yes. Twice its own weight. What's that? Twice its own weight. Twice its own weight. I know, a, I know a number, so you might be right, but I know a, I know a number. <laughs> yes? 20. 
20 million. <laughs> 20, <000. laughs> a lot. A lot. 2,500. Here's the figure I have, and I feel like everybody's got a slightly different one. The figure I have is up to, in ideal conditions, up to 1,000 bugs per hour. Wow. Per hour. Now, can they keep that up for eight hours? I don't know. But what I do know is in Bracken, Texas, there's a colony of Mexican free-tailed bats that number in the millions. It's estimated that they can eat 200 tons of insects in a single summer night can't even conceive of what 200 tons of insects would look like, <laughs> but it's a lot. <laughs> cool thing about bats as well, just to take a look at it, tremendous diversity in the bat family. These are all drawings of real bats. Most of them are in Central and South America. The one in the middle looks exactly like a foo dog from a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> you can't make things up like that. Bats are one of the most diverse groups of mammal. In the world, there's 5,400 species of mammal, roughly. And if I was to take each and every one of those and line them up side by side, one grizzly bear, one black bear, one polar bear, one koala bear, one panda bear, so on and so forth, through all the mammals, we would find that 1,100 of them were different species of bats. So one out of five mammals is a bat. Kind of astonishing amount of diversity in the bat family. I could talk about bats all evening, but I'm not going to. Um... Instead, I wanted to introduce a little more drama to the night, and specifically, I had a tangled tale of romance that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, I find that the kids always get coerced into volunteering. How unfair. So kids, if you would like to volunteer a parent of your choice to come up and help me with this activity, please raise your hand high and gesture at the parent that you would like to have us. Who would you like to see come up? Your dad's coming up. Oh, no, oh, no. Your kids did it. Free thief, free thief, free thief. All right, you figure this one out. I'll be back for one of you. All right, who else is coming up here? My dad. Your dad's coming up? Oh, great. Who's your up first? I need two more. If you just want to, oh, I see a hand gesturing. Breaking down family bonds at the park. You're out of the will, kid. All right. And one more. One more. Oh, boy. Come on out. All right. 